Well, thank you everybody for coming out. Um, my name is Paul Engel and I'm the director of the Brockton Public Library. Uh, thank you, thank you, yes, yes. <laughs> Clapping is okay. <laughs> uh, on behalf of the Library Board of Trustees, on behalf of the library staff who are represented by SEIU 888 Local, on behalf of the Library Foundation, I have the privilege to uh, welcome you to the Old Colony Library Network legislative event. And I also have the privilege of welcoming you to the Brockton Public Library. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I also have the privilege to, to, uh, to introduce Mark Lindy. He is the chair of the Brockton Public Library trustees. Mark. Thanks, Mark. Yeah. Welcome to Brockton, the city of champions. We're glad you're here. Our library is a gem, as you can see. I was fortunate uh, when I was 15 years old to work here. I was a library page in the closed stacks that we're not standing in anymore. We opened it all up. And on behalf of my fellow trustees in the, the city, I welcome you here as well. I do want to, I'm the person that's going to introduce our mayor the Honorable Bill, Bill Carpenter. Bill Carpenter was a member of the Brockton School Committee prior to being elected the mayor. He's a big supporter of public education and a big supporter of our library system. We've, we've thrived under his administration and we want to continue to grow. We have two branch libraries, the east side and the west side. But without further ado, because I know the mayor is at going to one of three places tonight, uh, Bill Carpenter. Bill, come on up. Welcome. Thank you, good evening. I always wondered what the inside of the library looked like. I, I like just kidding. Teed that one up for my opponents, yeah. Um, it really is a pleasure to be here and all the elected officials that I'm sure uh, Paul will be sure to introduce. I just want to share a couple of thoughts with you about um, what the public libraries mean in a city like Brockton. Because I know this is the old colony network and most of you are from the surrounding suburbs. And I think it's, in, it's important for me to note that the mission here, I think, is a little bit different than the mission in the surrounding towns. You know, here I view the public libraries as really just being an extension of our public school system. Is that me? I'm sorry. I was waiting for a really important phone call a little while ago, and I forgot to shut it off. There we go. I hate that when people do that to me, too. Um, but here in a city like Brockton, um, what the library does is it does the same thing as the public schools do. It levels the playing field for every kid growing up in this city. Because not every student in our school system goes home to a house with internet. Not every student in our school system goes home to a home with a home uh, computer. Um, about half of the students in our school system are at some degree of being English language learners. Um, and so if you think about what some of those challenges are and how we meet them, it's with public libraries because this is where they can come. I mean, I, I was thinking driving over here how libraries, how much libraries have changed since I was a student uh, because I remember always going to the library to use the Encyclopedia Britannica the night before a report was due. And, um, but it isn't a kind of the same thing because my folks couldn't afford Encyclopedia Britannica, so I used the one at the library. And is that any different than today for kids that are growing up in families who don't have internet access at home or don't have a wireless device? So, so much of the library is still the same, I know, but so much has changed too. But I just ask you just give some thought for a couple minutes that what it means in a city like Brockton, and I know how much our seniors rely on the library. My dad is almost 91, still takes books out of the library, doesn't understand why you would ever buy a book when you can rent them for free down at the library. <laughs> the only books he owns are ones, used ones from the library has their book sale every year and sells the old books. 
Every book in his house has got a stamp in it that it used to belong to the library. Um, but it's critically important in Brockton. You know, we're a city of opportunity, and one of our biggest responsibilities is to make sure every person, every young person growing up in this city has the same opportunities for success. And the library is a big, big part of making sure that every person gets that opportunity. And we're very fortunate. We have people like Mark and others that have served on our boards for years. Um, but Paul, wherever Paul is, Paul has been a great addition to Brockton. And he really has brought new leadership to the library. He does exciting things, uh, not afraid to take on the challenges. And so, Paul, I appreciate everything you're doing and all your employees do here and what the mission of this library is. So it's a pleasure for me as the mayor to welcome you not just to Brockton, but to the Brockton Public Library. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Carpenter, for your, your kind words. Um, next up, we have my reading glasses. We are going to hear uh, from some uh, legislative, uh, our, our legislative sponsor for the evening. Uh, that would be State Senator Michael D. Brady. Thank you, and welcome everyone to the library. This is a beautiful, beautiful library, and um, we've been very fortunate. I'm going to uh, try to keep it brief, but I want to tell you a little history. The Brockton Public Library was first established in 1867, when Brockton was still known then as the town of North Bridgewater. With a collection of about 600 books purchased from prominent citizens, the town opened the library in what was called the Studley Building on the corner of Main and High Street, a couple blocks away from here. The library changed locations a couple of times until 1893 when it was moved to the basement of City Hall. And then the early start of 1903, the city's librarian was citing the need for a larger building. In 1910, Brockton Mayor William Clifford wrote a letter to industrialist Andrew Carnegie requesting a donation for a new public library building. During his lifetime, Mr. Carnegie was responsible for the construction of 2,509 libraries. In the English-speaking world, Brockton librarian Frank Whitmore followed up the mayor's letter with his own appeal to Carnegie, saying, the library's shelves and space is desperately needed, and it's growing. And the population of this area was growing rapidly at the time. We were at the forefront of the shoe industry still back then, as Brockton supplied all the shoes, majority of the shoes for the Civil War and World War I and II. Carnegie agreed to donate 75000 to build a new library then increased the donation to 100,000 after the city conducted a study of library needs and found that the original amounts wouldn't be sufficient. In return, the city agreed to appropriate at least 11,000 annually for the operation of the library. The dedication of the new library took place on June 10, 2013, designed by Nathan Smith of New Bedford. The exterior of the building was constructed with brick and limestone, and the interior finish was of white marble and quartered oak. Skylights were built into the roof and many other additions, and it was a beautiful library. But as the city grew and so forth, this library had outgrown itself. And we had many plays and events here to raise money for the libraries. And, if, and when I was a lot thinner and had less gray hairs, I appeared in a play here called Murder in the Library. I was on the school committee. And I was one of the suspects with another uh, elected official in another community. And it was a computer virus that killed the person. So we sang a song. There was a young lady named Lisa Villani who was a music teacher in Brockton, and she knew I sang a little bit. So we sang to the tune of Making Whoopi, but the words were changed to User Friendly. And it, was a, and it was all computer lingo that we sang, but it was a wonderful, wonderful event. And at the time, one of our former governors cut the funding for a lot of libraries, not just Brockton. So we all went in to lobby the legislature. And our former predecessor, Tom Kenny, was one of the best supporters of libraries that you could ever have. So he was in support of it. But we all went into Boston, lobbied the legislators. And, and our director at the time had a candy hat that said, have a hat, support our libraries. Through the efforts of many Brocktonians and people from the South Shore, we were ab able to advocate the legislators to override the governor's veto. And they supported funding the library. So this beautiful addition is part of that. And at the time, our library wasn't even handicap accessible. 
So never mind, Tom, Kennedy couldn't get in here unless Jerry, Cassie, and myself carried it in, in here, but young children couldn't even get in here without the help of assistance. So we were able to put a beautiful addition, an elevator, made it handicap accessible. We have more beautiful board meetings downstairs in this library, and this is a beautiful, beautiful addition to our downtown. And I want to, as the mayor mentioned, welcome our new director, because he's done a yeoman's work, and he's coming up with new ideas that we need to keep the city moving forward and these libraries are so important. So I'm very honored to be a host with my fellow colleague, Representative Cassidy, and I know Representative Michelle Dubois is here. Representative Claire Cronin is chairing the Judiciary Committee, and she called, she's dealing with some serious legislation, so even at six o'clock, she was still in the State House tonight, so she apologized she couldn't make it tonight, but we're a great team in Brockton, and to our city councilors, I know Wynn Fowles here, and um, Jean Devoncourt, and Ann Beauregard, who's probably one of the biggest advocates for the libraries, and she does a lot of work, and she keeps us informed of what's going on constantly, so we're staying on top of things, and uh, as well as Mark Laney, who's on the school committee, but we're very fortunate. We work as a team here in Brockton, and we have a great delegation, and none of us does it alone, so we're very fortunate that we have a great team here. So on behalf of all of us, I want to thank you for all coming tonight. As uh, was stated with the mayor, I have a couple other events to go to tonight as well, and I know Representative Cassidy does so, and Representative Dubois, but thank you very much for being a part of this, and please let us know what we can, can do to continue to support libraries in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Brady. Uh, next up, we are going to hear from our legislative guest speakers, and... Uh, we will start with Representative Michelle Dubois. Thank you. So like all of you, I had my day planned very perfectly. I was touring a facility that I had to dress casual for, and I was going to go home and change. I have it laid out on my bed. And then time just flew by, so I'm here dressed more casually than I would have liked, so I have my winter coat on. I hope I don't offend anyone. And it isn't an, I'm not trying to insult either, but I'm so happy to be here with you. And when I was asked, I was asked to at, um, talk about what the library means to me. So I grew up in a very low-income family. Um, both of my parents, um, one graduated with the GED, the other one didn't graduate till she was like in her 40s. And when I grew up, it was a really difficult time but I had this best friend whose mother had a PhD and was very interested in libraries, and I was at her house all the time. So she would bring me to the Brockton Library at least once a week. I fell in love with the library. I would come here all the time. I had a library card. I learned so much. My mother loved it. Everything was wonderful. I love the library. So then I would be in high school, and I'd be sitting in my cafeteria, and I'd see my little grandfather walking by. In retirement, George Duke Dubois worked here delivering books to the different satellite libraries, so I was really proud of him. And then I went off to college, and I took a semester off from college, and wonderful Brenda Rodriguez hired me. So I worked here before the renovation, and I would go on the glass shelves, and I put books away, and it was just such a great, I had to take a break from college, and what a great way to take a break from college. And for a while, I thought, maybe I'll be a reference librarian. And then I saw how much schooling it would take, and I said, maybe I will do something else. But I do love the library. And I love it for the opportunity that it gives people for self-education and for the ability to meet with their neighbors at a level that you can be rich, you can be poor, you can be very intellectually um, powerful, or you can be more simple and very smart in your own way. And you can all meet here at the library and get something that shows that our society wants everybody to achieve their full potential, which in Brockton is very important. And I did forget. When I was like 12, I would come to movies at the library here. And later when I became a city councilor, I found out I was like t eight, 10 and 12 at the old movie theater they used to have up on the second floor. And Tom Brophy, who was a colleague of mine and much older than me, was the <laughs> 
he was the projectionist. So I used to be a kid in the library watching the movies and Tom Brophy was a projectionist and then years later when we were both serving the city we found out that we were both here at the same time. And so just overall um, I was not responsible for the renovation but I thank so much everybody that was responsible including our late uh, Senator Tom Kennedy. I know that he had a big role to play and everyone has a lot of shoes to fill with his um, um, being gone now. But I appreciate everything that everyone here does in the room. And I remember myself as a young person really needing a library and not even knowing it. And now as an adult and as a state representative, I want to be able to afford that opportunity for other children. So I am here to let you know that I will support the libraries in any way I can. And I think the new director, Paul, is wonderful. And I love the team already. The team at the Brockton Library can't be beat. So thank you very much. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you very much. Uh, rounding out the, um, the legislators, we are going to hear from State Representative Jared Cassidy. Yeah. yeah. Not that I wasn't listening to my colleagues, but I was looking up at the screen and all the uh, different uh, libraries throughout the, uh, the uh, area here. It's just beautiful, some of the uh, libraries. Um, thank you very Welcome, everybody here to Brockton. I just want to... Uh, um, Say to librarians, I apologize because uh, when I was in school, I would always tell my parents that I was uh, going to the library, which I really wasn't. As Mike knows, I'd go behind the skating rink, but uh, that's that's you know here here and there. <clears throat> um, but uh, I was there the night that uh, the uh, board of commissioners uh, um, uh, hired Paul, and uh, that was the best thing that we ever did was hire Paul because he's out in the community. Every time I go to a different event. Paul is out there, you know, publicizing the library here in Brockton. And uh, thank goodness he doesn't live in my ward because he'd run against me. Um, but uh, I come here quite often. We read to the kids, and uh, that's the most uh, um, heartfelt thing is when the kids look up to you and you're reading, and it just gives them a lot of uh, um, uh, look, uh, looking up to you. And uh, that's, that's just one of the best things that I can do is uh, read to the kids here. Um, my brother-in-law, he uh, was a firefighter here in the city of Brockton. He became blind uh, a few years ago, and he uh, comes to the library and uh, gets the books. And uh, that's the, the, the biggest thing that, uh, for, for him is to uh, have the books that uh, can be read um, you know, on, on uh, uh, his tape recorder. Uh, budget season is coming up. We were just talking about uh, going to Everett for the uh, March 13th, I think, is when the, uh, the, uh, they come before the Ways and Means Committee which is uh, always, Everett is uh, one of the best places to go because they have an awful lot of good food and uh, the band and uh, so that's, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a huge supporter and I just joined the uh, caucus, the uh, House Caucus for the Libraries and uh, that's, that's uh, what we're trying to do on the House side. I know Senator Brady and uh, Rep. DeWire have been very big supporters. Uh, but going to the, uh, the Brockton Public Library, Tom Kennedy was, uh, as Mark uh, Lindy knows, he was uh, very instrumental in getting this new edition put on. Uh, so in his memory, we put, we, in the budget, we got an awful lot of money to name the library after Tom Kennedy. So in the springtime, we're going to do a uh, ceremony for, uh, for Tom Kennedy. Um, so that's, uh, that's all I have to say. And thank you very much, Paul. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. So before we move into the next part of the, the, the show, I, um, I wanted to make sure I, I, I pointed out all of the uh, city councilors from Brockton that are here. Uh, I, know that, I know that that was said by uh, uh, Senator Kennedy, but we have uh, Jean Derenicord up front here, who's the, the newest councilor. And, and he's, a, yes, right, Jean was a former trustee, and he actually interviewed me for when I, when I came here, and he, he, he raked me over the coals, and it was, it was a, a great interview, Jean. <laughs> Uh, in the back, we have uh, we have Anne Beauregard, who runs the uh, who runs the bookstore, and, and she is a serious advocate for the library. Uh, Wynn Farwell is over here, and uh, Wynn, I always love talking to you, and I have we've had great conversations. Susan Nicastro is here. Hey, Susan, I didn't see you come in. Mark's Mark's feeding me. <laughs> uh, I know that we have a school committee member that. Uh, I, Judy Sullivan, and I'm sorry, I don't, I still don't know everybody's name, so. <laughs> um, Mark Lindy is also on the school committee for uh, Southeastern Vocation. So Mark, and, he's, and Mark is also the chair of the library trustees. 
Have I missed anybody from Brockton? From any, any city councilors? No? Good. Uh, I'm going to turn it over to, to Jennifer Harris from Plymouth, and Jennifer is going to uh, run the rest of the program. Thank you, Thank you all for coming this evening. I'm Jennifer Harris, and I'm very proud to be the library director at Plymouth Public Library. I will be speaking shortly after our general speakers, and I'll give you some more information, but I wanted to tell you that tonight's vision was to give an opportunity for our library directors to speak about construction that's going on on the South Shore. Old Colony Library Network has 29 libraries, of which we've asked three speakers, um, Jesse Finney from Situate, who had just completed construction. We also have Pat Basler from Stoughton, who's in the middle of construction. And we have Rob McLean from Weymouth, who will be beginning construction. And I think what's truly important to understand, when we go out in our communities and we hear people say, oh, who needs a public library? You have the internet. And we go, if, if the state is funding us at this level for the kind of construction going on and the renovations, and you hear how proud everyone is here in Brockton of their own library, it's, it goes beyond the internet. It goes beyond four walls that are a home for people to come, be educated, learn culturally, and also to have the open doors of democracy. So I obviously feel very strongly about this, and this is the reason why we wanted to have a conversation tonight about construction. So I'm going to ask Jesse Finney from Situate to come up and speak. Hi everyone, thank you so much for uh, having me here tonight and um, uh, I know that you know that we're going to be talking about the uh, library construction program but we, what you don't know is I'm actually the luckiest one of the three. My project is done. Um, <laughs> so, But I'm here to talk to you about a journey, a long one that has ended in our beautiful new facility that you can see right there. Um, it began in 2007, first with a formal needs assessment that revealed severe and expensive deficiencies in the library building. Then director Kathy Meeker looked at the nearly $4 million worth of work to be done, and with the support of the library trustees and the foundation, uh, she sought out a Massachusetts Board of Library Commissioners public library construction grant. And she knew that that grant opportunity could allow the library to not just address those upgrades and repairs that we needed, but to transform us into a true community center and a civic hub. The application was successful, and the project was waitlisted until 2012, when Situate was given one year to secure town funding. At this point, Ms. Meeker turned the reins over to me. As a resident of Situate, I came into the situation with eyes wide open. I knew that our town had many competing needs uh, and other major projects, just as all of our towns do. Um, and I also knew that it was a really tall order to convince the residents of Situate that this wasn't just a beneficial project, it was an essential one. Um, and that the time was now because we had half of our funding secured from the state. The foundation, trustees, and over 200 volunteers worked tirelessly during that year on a campaign of advocacy and awareness. And in the end, it was all worth it. In 2013, the project passed unanimously at town meeting and by a three to one margin at the ballot box. <laughs> Thank you. After several years of design and construction, we opened a new public library in Situate in June of 2017. This was a community effort. No one group or individual could have possibly done this alone. And those volunteers that started the journey with us are still right alongside us today because that is what a library is, a community gathering place, a place for folks to put down those devices for two minutes and connect with a friend or a neighbor, a place to quietly think and reflect things that can be very difficult to do in today's world. The reception to the new library has been incredible. Not only has attendance and circulation increased, but we're seeing people in groups that we've never seen before. Many patrons have told us that the building has exceeded their expectations, and in a massive show of support, our town citizens have contributed nearly $1.6 million in private donations to the Library Foundation to the cost of the project. a little shout out to our uh, former foundation president, Les Ball, who probably raised maybe 1.5 of that just on his own. 
Um, all of that said, and with the knowledge and security of being in a new building, I'm here tonight to not only ask you to support the public library construction program, but every line under the Massachusetts Board of Library Commissioners purview. It is well and good to open beautiful new buildings, but if we do not maintain what we have, we'll be in the same predicament that Situate was in in 2007, looking at a mountain of ignored repairs and upgrades. Adequate funding for things like the library technology and resource sharing line, which supports our library networks, as well as the state aid to public libraries line, which directly supports our libraries, not only helps our libraries, but helps our towns, as this can at least save some of the funding burden from them. Any money that comes from the town uh, that, that helps the town can help maintain and protect, to echo the words of Library Commissioner Mary Ann Kluggish, this wonderful gift that Situate gave itself in the form of a new library. Thank you guys so much. Um, we really appreciate all of the support of the legislators that came out tonight. Hi again, you get me for a second. Uh, when I sat down, I had a text from, from Mark and, and uh, he, he recognized that I, I forgot to mention somebody and I wanna make sure that I recognize the president of the Brockton Library Foundation, Mr. Gary King. We as librarians are very flexible, so if we, we wanted to make sure everyone gets recognized. So at this point, I would like to introduce Pat Basler, uh, the director of Stoughton Public Library. Hi, everybody. Put my glasses on. <laughs> so I was asked to talk tonight about the building phase of a public library construction project. And it's so nice to follow after Jesse from Situate because now I know that there is light at the end of the tunnel <laughs> <laughs> and we could have a happy ending in our future. Um, Stoughton is kind of unique, well, in many ways, if you know Stoughton, you know, we're next to, yeah. I won't go there, but um, it's, I've been there 20 years and for the last 10, we've been working on the library project. Uh, our library was built in 1969 and it had a lot of asbestos and it wasn't handicap accessible and all these things. Um, the thing that is unusual about our approach to getting the funding is Stoughton never had an override until last year, ever. So we build buildings by borrowing money and then paying it off. And if we don't do that, then nothing gets done. And that happened for quite a while. So uh, when my building committee wanted to move forward with the funding, they wanted to apply for the grant and push the funding, the borrowing article at the same time. So we did that and the town voted like, we have a elected uh, representative government, they voted something like 122 to 10 to fund, to borrow the money to fund uh, half of a, a $14 million project. And then we didn't get the grant for the next year. So we had the, the town funding a year before we had the, um, the grant award. And because of that, we were very low. We were 30th on the waiting list. And so from 2012 until 2017, we sat on the waiting list during the recession, really. Uh, we did the design phase and then we just waited. And of course, uh, you know, s building for a square foot in 2012 was about 220 a square foot. Now it's about 440. So it required quite a bit of redesign when the um, funds were finally released. We were able in 2017 to appoint um, a, a new building committee and we met intensely for an entire year and had to, uh, our original design was 39,000 square feet. Our final design is about 32,000 square feet. And, but we so we had to meet all the program needs, but still um, stay within this $14 million budget. And somehow this building committee made that happen. I, I still don't know how. Um, the building is halfway done. It hopefully will look like that blue glass beautiful picture over there. Um, it's, it's right entering the center of town. It really is a social hub, as Jesse said, as, as most libraries are. 
Uh, Stoughton is a very diverse community. It has 17 languages at the high school. It's a working class town. There aren't a lot of deep pockets. We are doing some fundraising, but I'm not sure we'll ever be as successful as Situate. Um, but people have a, a real sense of volunteerism and everybody does want to be a part of it in some way. So that's sort of the storyline for Stoughton. Um, the good thing about doing this project is we had five million dollars worth of work to be done and with uh, borrowing seven million and getting a grant for seven million we really are ending up with a, a third bigger library with no, no uh, hazardous materials. It'll be handicap accessible and it will be wonderful for the next maybe 50 years. Um, the Massachusetts Library Construction Grant Program encourages a wonderful partnership between the state and local taxpayers to improve libraries of all sizes across the entire state of Massachusetts. The grant allowed the library to expand and renovate to meet the needs of the 21st century as well as finally achieve handicap accessibility and eliminate the hazardous materials. Our new library will also have private quiet spaces, glassed in teen room, glassed in children's story and craft room. If you've ever been to our library, it's a very big open space. You can see everything when you walk in, but you can also hear everything. So this will be a huge improvement. Our library is never quiet, as most libraries aren't anymore. Um, but it would be nice for people to be able to think um, in, in a little bit of peace. So having the quiet rooms for the teens and the teens uh, and the children would be great. The public library community has been extremely helpful to us during this long process, even to the point of passing on surplus shelving. Randolph, for instance, thank you, Megan, and Situate gave me the rolled stacks. And I thought at the time, I'll never use these. But it turns out when you move, you need to set something up before you move all your books over. We're now in something that looks like a small BJ's uh, in Stoughton, and it, but it works great for us. So we're, we're very grateful. And we hope uh, when we're done with this, we will pass our stacks on to Rob because <laughs> he has to find a temporary space to go to next. Um, the wonderful thing about the library community is we really are good. Not only do we share our resources, but we share the good, the bad, and the ugly in these types of projects. And I have to say my colleagues have been hugely supportive as well as tipping me off to like pitfalls to avoid. So it's just a wonderful uh, collegial group. Um, we of course will try to do the same for Weymouth and help you in every way we can. Um, it's a very exciting process. It can be daunting. Uh, some days I think it will never happen, but we are almost halfway through. So thank you very much for all the support. And so to bring this puppy home, I'm going to bring Rob McLean up from Weymouth, please. Thanks, Jennifer. Um, so, so two years ago, um, I met with our newly elected mayor, Bob Headland, um, in a meeting where the topic was one where I it wasn't the first meeting I wanted with the new mayor um, because I had to tell him that uh, we needed millions of dollars to um, <laughs> fix our main library. Um, it had a lot of big issues with it. Um, we needed a new roof, a new HVAC system. We had um, asbestos throughout the building that complicated those issues. So we really needed to invest millions of dollars um, soon and still be left with the 1965 library that did not meet our 21st century needs um, for our staff or our patrons. <clears throat> um, luckily, um, Bob Hedlund was a former state senator who had been around his district um, during his time in office, um, attending groundbreakings and ribbon cuttings at other public libraries that made, um, that benefited from the Massachusetts Public Library Construction Program. And most recently, before he came mayor, he had been at um, the Situate Town Library's groundbreaking. So he said, and this is like the most amazing part, he said, let's build a new library. <laughs> so 
Um, <laughs> so that was, wasn't what I was expecting or hoping the outcome of the meeting would be, I'm just hoping I wouldn't get fired. Um, <laughs> But he said, let's bring somebody down from the MBLC because the um, application process is now currently open. So we did. We had Lauren Stara, who's a construction specialist, come down and meet with us. And she said, you have 11 months. It's a lot of work, but you can probably get it in if you um, do your work and hurry up. So we jumped in with two feet. And um, over the course of 11 months, we got our building program written. Uh, which is the fundamentals of telling us what our community needs over the next 20 years in its new building. Um, that was approved. We hired an architect and had five months to come up with our application, which we submitted um, last January, January of 2017. Um, um, so we got that done. Um, besides the um, millions of dollars we had to invest into the library, um, we had a lot of issues with our current library that um, have reached a breaking point for us and our patrons. We have one study room for a, a town of 55,000 people. We have six public computers. Um, the, building, the building materials, um, as well as the asbestos prevent, um, um, they make our building inflexible for technology improvements and for um, even for programming. Um, our meeting rooms are constantly overbooked. Um, so besides um, the major improvements we needed to the building, the building wasn't working anymore for us as a library. So uh, we got our application in last January and um, held our breath for six months until July when um, the Board of Library Commissioners held their meeting and we, we ran and sat as they read the um, libraries that got a grant and we were the one, last one to be announced. And that's, that's when I realized they were going alphabetically. Um, <laughs> I, I was about to have a heart attack and I realized, oh, it's alphabetical. Uh, um, so they awarded us a $12 million grant to help us build our $33 million library, a new library, new construction. So we get to start from uh, ground zero. Uh, we're building a 50,000 square foot library. Um, since we um, were awarded the grant in July, we secured our local funding with a unanimous vote by our town council, um, which is amazing. The public hearing was fantastic with a crowd of supporters um, saying the most wonderful things. Um, we hired a project manager um, in last month, and yesterday we met with, um, oh, we received our first payment of 2.4 million from the state um, last month. So we've got some money in the bank. But yesterday we met with a room full of architects who are all interested in submitting proposals to be our um, design team for the new library. Um, so it's really um, here. And I think um, our, our aggressive timeline has construction starting as soon as December. So we have a lot of work to do. We're cleaning out all the nooks and crannies of the uh, now 53-year-old building. Um, and librarians tend to keep things. And so we have a, a, a lot of things that we um, are, are finding homes for. Um, and uh, we'll, so we're going through that whole process. And um, it's been um, exciting, um, surprising, and, um, but certainly not possible without the support of our state representatives and state senators who made that program possible. Um, but also um, their support of the operational line items for the Mass Board of Library Commissioners and libraries throughout the state are, are very important. Um, the work that Lauren Stara, our construction specialist, and Rosemary Waltos do in managing and running the whole construction program is incredible. You know, the, that two-person team um, does a great job managing a multi-million dollar capital um, project program. And, um, um, the MBC's staff budget needs to be supported. Um, it's 12% lower than um, at its high. And um, we need more professionals there at the headquarters to help us um, convince local decision makers about our needs and um, help us get the funding we need to make um, the right decisions for our communities and build 
beautiful new libraries. So I want to thank the state representatives and senators who are here today for their past support and hope that um, this budget season they'll continue to support Massachusetts libraries. Thank you. Well, I'd like to thank uh, our speakers. I think they all made different points and greatly appreciated. Before I move on to uh, my connection with Massachusetts Library Association uh, Legislative Committee, I want to take a minute to recognize any legislators who are here from other areas besides Brockton. So I know for myself, Plymouth, I have three of my trustees as well as one of my selectmen, Tony Provenzano. Thank you. We, we do have a joke, we have a joke in Plymouth that you have to, they'll pack a lunch before they'll consider even driving over the Pine Hills, so <laughs> it's always appreciated. Um, I, I, I don't believe any of my other representatives uh, were able to attend tonight, uh, Matt's not here, so, but, but uh, we are in constant contact and we keep them informed uh, as to what's going on and all our activities. Um, so let's see, who else? What other communities do we have? Does Situate, did you have, have any of your representatives here? And um, Pat, um, Rob, you have some of your trustees are here, okay. Any other legislators who can self-identify? <laughs> nope, there you go, we covered everyone, thank you. Um, but I know that if, you're not, if they're not here, we are in their hearts, <laughs> so. So at this point, I, want, I do want to thank everyone for attending. I want to also thank Sue Kaler is here from the Mass, uh, Massachusetts Library System. Thank you, Sue. And <laughs> Sue is responsible for interlibrary loan management throughout the Commonwealth, which is a huge requirement. Uh, part of the reason why we need funding at the state level is to sustain our delivery system, of which the Massachusetts Library System runs. Also, Greg Pronovitz, the executive director, wasn't able to be here this evening, but he sent his regards. So they are strong supporters of all our libraries and how we keep the books moving. Um, I also wanted to thank the Old Colony Library Network Legislative Committee. So where's David Slater? David, did he say, okay, David, David, David is our executive director and he's kind of behind the scenes but keeps things going. We meet, our legislative committee meets as the needs, uh, uh, like we, we were gearing up for tonight. Uh, Paul Engel joined us because Brockton was being the host for this session, but he's been a great addition. He also traveled to Washington, D.C. last year for National Library Legislative Day. As, as did I, so we're all kind of learning our way through this. Uh, Terry Stano, who was not able to attend tonight for personal reasons, is with the Thayer, uh, she's the Thayer Braintree Library Director, and she too is an active member of our Legislative Committee. So the, the reason why that even is active at this point, uh, when I became the director, I was given the opportunity to join the Massachusetts Library Association Legislative Committee. And we started to uh, make plans. One of our annual events is uh, Library Legislative Day up at the State House. So I would like everyone to put in their calendar Tuesday, March 6th. It's from approximately 10 to 1 in the afternoon. There are registrations that went out, and we're happy to help you register. The reason why we find this day important, it's kind of our goal, one of our goals, is that we want to get directors and local legislators and the local community, the patrons, talking to their state representatives and senators so that they understand how important their public library, and, the, and we have some college libraries with OCLN, how important they are to the individual communities. And this was the reason, this was the uh, focus for our slideshow, was to show a couple activities at every library um, because we put it together at Plymouth, we had five, we only gave everyone like three. Um, so you'll see that flashing through and the point was, it's just so much is going on. When I was looking through our pictures, three, at least three that I wanted were outdoor activities, our lawn, our, our parking lot, we do a DPW day, 
We have a, a New England Electric Car Association show, and that's not even inside the library. That's just using our parking lot, which whoever's constructing their buildings, remember, you need parking lots. <laughs> um, so that, that is kind of my passion, is I, I, when I started as a librarian back in 1987 at the Somerville Public Library, my director, Paul DeAngelis, brought me to Library Legislative Day. And I wasn't, you know, I was just in library school, but I learned at that point that you show up, you start talking to your legislators, you get a comfort level, but that there is a point. We talk about the library uh, legislative agenda, and that is what our Mass Board of Library Commissioners uh, kind of focus us on that. But the budget process is a whole uh, series of events that goes on, and we're aware of that. So we, we were already ramping up. In March, uh, the, the, what I understand is the governor already in January has kind of said his, his, he's already said his budget. And then the House of Representatives, the Ways and Means Committee, they're all meeting. And things move along in March, then April, uh, more decisions are made, and then May, the Senate and the, and the House meet together. And hopefully we have a budget voted in for the following year. So all through that process, I'm asking, we're asking, everyone to remember to talk to their legislators and give them a reason why they should support. Uh, we have resource sharing is one of the, the most functional way of managing groups. Librarians have been way ahead of everyone. So we, we make sure that Matt, the Commonwealth is getting the best advantage for our buck. Librarians are tough that way. So um, I wanted to uh, remind you about that, about State House. And also, I think it's time for me to introduce George Camo from the Massachusetts Board of Library Commissioners. Good evening. Are you all in a good mood? Because I'm going to change that. I really am. Um, First of all, it, it's so great to be here uh, in, in Brockton. Um, and I really, this is an amazing library and an amazing community in, in so many ways. And so uh, driving over here, I live in Canton, which was a problem when I did the groundbreaking for Stoughton. Um, got a little boo. That was the first time as a commissioner I had ever been booed. Um, but it was all in good. It was OK. It was all right. Um, but I'm really pleased to be here tonight, and uh, I want to recognize uh, Vicki Kaufman, a dear friend and fellow uh, ex-commissioner of the uh, Board of Library Commissioners, but uh, Vicki left the commission and then got right to building another library. So really amazing to have Vicki here. And uh, if you haven't met him yet, uh, James Lonergan is here, our director of the Massachusetts Board of Library Commissioners. You know, they always say you do a nationwide search and then you hire the person that's right next to you. That's not what we did. We did a nationwide search. We brought him up from, from another state, but he worked at the commission for many years and he's a familiar face to many and we're so fortunate that you're with us. So thank you for that. Uh, and by the way, this is the first uh, library uh, event uh, for the legislative events that I've ever been to that's had alcohol. Um, <laughs> When I heard there was alcohol, I said, I'm going. I got to see what is Brockton all about, that they've got alcohol. And not only that, the library, um, these are like, like soggy egg things, you know, at 7 in the morning, 8 in the morning, all across the state. You know, I drive to North Adams, and next thing I know, I'm eating an egg sandwich, and it's 7.30 in the morning. Um, but here, this is much better. This is much better. So thank you for that. Yeah. But really what we're here tonight to do, um, you know, there's been a lot of really good uh, work exhibited here, and I love the library construction program. It is really pivotal, and I know you're very proud of it, but I don't want to talk about that because that is very successful. The, um, legislator, the legislators, the governor, ANF, they all understand the power of bonding and the power of constructing and building. No problem. I can get bonding money. You've been wonderful. Uh, we've had $100 million bonds. 
several times over, we've constructed more than 200 new public libraries or expanded public libraries. We pay up to 60% of that construction cost. It's the gold standard in library construction as far as I'm concerned in the United States and certainly uh, in, in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, it is a pillar of construction projects. So I'm very proud of that program and you're proud too and I've heard all these wonderful speakers and it's all laudatory. But what I want to talk about tonight is actually the critical needs. And that's why I'm not in a great mood as I was sort of sitting over there going, oh, I'm going to get up there and really some, ring some necks. Because this is the choir, OK? We're in church, and you're the choir, and you're happy to sing. And I've been doing this for over 13 years. I've been singing at these events. And I've been coming to these events and each year as I've been to choir practice and you've sung your songs and I've sung my songs, things have gotten worse, really worse. And you need to know that and you need to hold our friends accountable. And I'm not going to provide heat, but you're, you understand these issues and you understand and I understand that you have lots of priorities. But for bang for your buck, it's in the library, Amen. all right? When the mayor was speaking this evening, and he talked about libraries being the great equalizer and extending um, wonderful things for school children, no, 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 it's everyone. You, if you need to learn English, can't go into the high school. You have to come to the library. If your first language is anything other than English, that's your solution. If you're homeless, you can't go into a K through five program. The schools are totally different. I don't buy the analogy that libraries and schools are on equal footing. I put libraries higher, quite frankly, and I know li and I schools. Well, look, you know, I saw the look. I saw, oh my God, can you say that school committee, right? Because here's the thing, this is the underpinning of our democracy, and let me lay it out for you. Let me tell you what's happening. In Brockton, part of the OCLN network, the funding for the network, the thing that, 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 that makes these libraries work, it's not a very sexy line item. And because of that, and because of what it's called, and we've changed the name of this line several times, it doesn't matter. The truth of the matter is, when we began funding that line, we were funding 30% of it at state level. Today, 9%. You're still doing all the same things you did when we were funding at 30, but at 9, you have to pay for it, and you can't. It's impossible. It's, it's not possible to, um, to uh, fund these lines without more support. It's just impossible. Um, last year, Brockton received 25,000 items through the interlibrary loan system. All right? That is um, uh, interlibrary loan of 25,000 items. That's 95,000 people, the equivalent of $293,000 in value to just Brockton. I'm just talking about one place here. And the numbers across the board, uh, in terms of our historic highs for libraries, uh, are pretty much at their historic lows, or just a little bit above, and you'll see there's a sheet there. And yet at the same time, Attendance has doubled, tripled. Borrowing is skyrocketing. We have electronic resources and computers and ebooks all exploding at the same time. And libraries can't meet that demand. And yet they do. They do it every day because librarians actually are willing to go further and say yes even when there are no's. They always say yes. And any time who's been to it, thank you, and any time who's been to a story time, can attest to all those strollers out in the hall just burgeoning to get in. And against that backdrop, state aid to public libraries is down 10% over 2009 numbers, 44% on the state aid to regional libraries over 2002 numbers, and network technology, this is the one. 2001, we are down 52%. This is 2018. 
That's 17 years of technology and progress, and the funding is 52% lower than it was at the beginning of the age of the internet. That's what you need to focus on, and that's what you need to think about when we advocate for libraries. In the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, more than 85,000 hours have been lost in the face of the cumulative budget shortfalls. 85,000 open hours for libraries. Okay, so there are a lot of really wonderful, rosy reasons to be here tonight. I don't always feel as rosy. I love going to groundbreakings. I'm very high and happy at groundbreakings. But at legislative days, that's not it. That's not what this is about. The budget that we face here in the Commonwealth, when money comes to the Board of Library Commissioners, 96% of that goes back to local libraries. It's a sound investment for tax dollars. And what we're advocating for and working against is 0.06% of the state budget, okay? That's a rounding error. It's tiny what we're asking for. So we have to advocate and make those lines a priority. We know that the underpinnings, all of us in the choir know that libraries are critical to a free and open society. And we do more with less. We run libraries on the goodwill of volunteers, bake sales, friends groups, private donations. And our libraries are more than bricks and mortar, more than books and shelves, as have been demonstrated here tonight and in every day across this Commonwealth. Libraries are the destination for ideas that shape our country. They are the safe haven from bullies, a warm place for the destitute, a gathering space for communities, a connection to the internet for those who can't afford $90 a month to get on the internet. Libraries are not about books. And we are constantly challenged by this digital age. And the question, I heard it several times, and you hear it all the time, I know you do, do we really need libraries? Because we got Google, right? But the library and the technology usage has skyrocketed as a result. Try to get a license, try to apply for food stamps, try to do anything in this government without access to the internet. All right, good luck, it's true. And I'm not talking about smartphone access, I'm talking about real live access, high speed access to computers and printers so that you can actually function. Because otherwise, we've got two sides of our society. One side who has enough to be able to do it without libraries, and the other side who can't do it without libraries. So that's why this is so critical. So when people ask you if libraries are relevant in this digital age, you have to answer with unassailable facts, not just relevant, but vital to the heart of our democracy, free and open to all. The internet, even more so today than when I contemplated these ideas over the last 14 years, is not free and open to all. And with the changes in uh, net neutrality, that's going to even be more critical. And libraries and the funding for that line are going to help us with the net neutrality issue. I know this is the case. And so you have to ask yourself, what are you going to do? What will you do? Do not leave this building feeling so good about what you heard tonight. And I don't want to negate a single thing that was said, because I believe in everything that was said. I support and love everything that was said. But I'm getting to the end of my commission uh, after 14 years. I have to get off. Uh, so I can say anything I want at this point. Um, that's true. Uh, Great respect for the governor, great respect for the, for the House and the Senate, um, but there's a limit, and we're at that limit, and you have to be part of the solution. You have to decide how you're going to take what you've heard tonight and shape your advocacy in the phone calls and the letter writing and really understand that it's not about building new libraries, although we can do that, and we've demonstrated. 
demonstrated the, that. It's about the challenge of funding a system that does more with less every day. And so that's my challenge to you. You find your way to do it. I've dedicated my time. Many of you have dedicated your time. And it's not enough. And that's really frustrating. So rather than um, sort of dwell on the negative, I'll leave you with the positive. I know that each one of you has the power in some way, large or small, to reach out and make a difference, whether it's at the legislative day or just calling your state rep and making sure your voice is heard, your neighbor's voices are heard, your children's voices are heard, and the voices for those who can't have voices. That's your job. That's what you should do. That's what advocacy is about, and that's what this night is about. And I hope I didn't get you so down, but I hope that I've put some little fire under you to go out and do something for libraries because it is so critical, more than ever. Politics aside, it's more critical no matter who is in Washington, no matter who is on Beacon Hill, or no matter who is in the mayor's office in this city. You, the people, have the power given to you by the Constitution to have an open and free public library. And I really want to stand proud when we can build on these numbers and turn away the darkness that has fallen over the Massachusetts library system. So thank you for everything tonight and Godspeed with your work. Wow. Take us to church, George. Take us to church. Um, I'm, I'm an improvising musician, and, and Mark texted me again and, and, uh, and said, you know, there's one person in this room who has a great story. And when I was at Li National Library Legislative Day last year, um, I told his story, and to, I had uh, people just jaws hitting the floor. And I'm wondering if I could uh, impose on you uh, a little uh, uh, deviation in this in this uh, script tonight, a little denouement, if you will. And I'm, I wonder if I could impose upon Gene to uh, tell his story really briefly. Yes? Yeah. Well, I'm not going to take you for too long. I didn't know I was speaking. They always do that. <laughs> but anyway, so I would like to thank you, I mean, so much for what you said. And, um, you know, I can empathize with it. Well, for those of you who don't know me, I don't like the glasses on me. Um, I'm Gene Bradley, the Wenan Court, Brockton City Council at large, and I believe I'm the first Haitian American elected male in the state. And um, um, as I'm listening to you know the gentleman over there talking about the greatness of the library, I start thinking about Malice over there, um, whom I met seven years ago here. Um, I was born in Haiti, and I came here after the earthquake, and um, when I first came, I did not speak a word of English. And um, fortunately, they had a program called ESL in here. And uh, my sister took me um, to learn English. Well, obviously, I didn't know ESL 1, ESL 2, ESL 3. But um, she opened her arms and said, let's do it. And um, without having an opportunity to learn English at this library, I wouldn't be able to go to Massachusetts Community College, graduate it, Suffolk University graduated and do a bunch of things. And I think for me, you know, not just the Brockton Public Library, but libraries are the basic foundation of ideas, knowledge, greatness for all of us. And of course, I believe you heard it. Um, I was fortunate enough to be called by the mayor and asked me to serve as one of the trustee. And like he said, I interview him. And I believe my question to you in terms of um, how do you see yourself in diversity and how do you approach the library was kind of like very unique, and I would like to thank Jocelyn, you know, that was there next to me to making sure that um, Paul actually understand what it means to have someone like himself in Brockton to serve the population. So for, him, for me, you know, at 27, um, I have to give thanks to the Brockton Public Library because without having the opportunity to learn English here for free, because I wouldn't be able to afford it, and being able to go to school and get an education and after like seven years, less than seven years, six years in governments, one for public office and won the election in this city, I think the library has a lot to do with it. So,
Um, how do I put this? Um, I appreciate your passion because it is real. I think people can feel it and sense it. And then nowadays, I've heard that. People say that we don't need libraries. But imagine a child like myself just come from Haiti and not knowing where to go and what to do. And mom and dad doesn't have anything. And like you said, not everybody can afford it. I do have an iPhone in Verizon. Sometimes I cannot pay the bill because it is too expensive. But I know I can go upstairs, which I used to do when I was going to college, to sort of like open you know, the computer. Although it was like 30 minutes and stuff like that. I spoke with the library reference. They let me do 45 minutes and stuff like that. I mean, if you know how to talk. <laughs> well, you have to have some kind of connection, isn't it? So, but what I truly want you folks to know is that it is important, and um, I work for, um, you know, I used to work in the house, and I know how much um, the folks from Brockton, I can speak, you know, carry that value. And of course, Jerry Cassidy, Clyde Cronin, Michelle Dubois, and of course, my boss, Senator Brady. So these are the people that I can tell you, they truly believe in it, not just saying words, but they believe in bringing resources for all of us in Brockton, because they know that we are very diverse in the city, and we got people from all over places. So I would like to thank you you know, for taking the time to be here. I would like to thank you for having the courage, not just to speak, but to speak with candid and motivation and determination. And of course, I would like to thank all of you who actually take your time, you know, to work at the library. Like you said, some of you have gone above and beyond to satisfy the needs because sometimes the requirement can be, you know, unbelievable. So I would like to thank Lucia Shannon, who's always been there for me no matter what. So thank you so much for opening the door for me in Brockton. Thank you so much for opening the door for me in this state. And thank you so much for opening the door for all of us who come from another country. God bless you all. Yeah. yeah. Yes, we were at church. So I should, I feel like I should say, you know, go in peace to love and serve. Um, go back to my, my, my Catholic roots. Uh, just want to shout out to, to um, Signature Catering and Shane Caledonia. Thank you. And, the, and, and finally, a shout out to our custodians who, this wouldn't have happened without them. <laughs> uh, there's still some food here and um, uh, hang out. And there's still some, some drinks. Um, uh, thank you all for coming tonight. I appreciate it.